Hello everyone, my name is Umar and we will explore the um, GitHub code spaces. Uh, we will set up a development environment for Bamni using code spaces and we will see how quickly um, code spaces allows us to do that and how quickly we can run Bamni on a code spaces environment. So we will start with uh, having a quick overview of code spaces. Uh, right here, this is the official page of github code spaces and uh, if we if you want to have an overview of what code spaces actually is so it's a fully configured dev environment uh, which runs on the cloud so as as free users we get uh, 60 hours uh, every month of free usage if we want more then we can of course look at the pricing but in this example i'm using a free um, free account free tier we'll see how much we can mm, you know do without paying actually for code spaces and uh, yeah so let us um, go to this is the Bamni organization github page and here we can see there are many Bamni repos so um, when if we want to develop for Bamni the first thing that comes in our mind is to have an actual running Bamni environment right so I want Bamni to be running um, and only then can I go and decide like let's say i want to make change to some module and then try that out so to run bamni uh, we have a repo here which is called bamni docker and this contains the configuration the docker docker compose configuration here and we can run bamni light bamni standard or or any many, uh, you know the different uh, variations of bamni so in order to run this, usually what we would do, uh, if we didn't have code spaces, I would first make sure, okay, um, I'll take this repo, clone it to my local, and uh, then I, I would think, okay, is, is my local equipped to run Bamni? Meaning that, uh, do I have Docker installed, for example? Uh, if, if yes, then I can go ahead. Do I have Git installed, right, to clone? I would need to run some Git commands, for example. So I would, I would need to have a basic setup and then again it depends on what kind of an operating system I have uh, if it is Mac OS there's a different procedure of doing that setup Windows Linux have their own different ways so code spaces with code spaces it all becomes easy and uh, so let's see how how we can create a code space so so to do that what I have to do is you know come to this report let's say we'll start it from here and we have the option here um, where we where we clone the repo there's an option for code spaces and I can just click on <coughs> click here on create code spaces on master this will quickly um, start a dev box or create a dev box uh, on the master branch branch is not that important here because we can anyway switch the branches once we are inside the code spaces but um, yeah this is if I click on this button here it will do it quickly for me but I, I don't want to do it right in this way instead I want to come here and we have this option here uh, create a new code space with options if I click on it it, it gives me a few um, configuration configurable options here for example let's me choose a branch so which branch I want to check out to uh, as I said um, before also this is not that important because we can we can anyway switch the branch once we are inside the dev box then it lets me choose a region I can uh, because this uh, this dev environment will be running on cloud so it lets me choose where I want to deploy that uh, the region which is usually closest to me so I, uh, by default Southeast Asia is selected for me so I'll keep it like that um, now having a region closer to you will give you a good experience the latency will be less so you will see that the um, when you type in commands and, and other stuff it will be quick then it lets me choose a machine type so I see two options here this is part of the free free tier uh, I see two core 8 GB to 32 GB and four core 16 GB 32 GB so I'm going to select this one because uh, we are going to do some some advanced things in it so let me choose this and create a code space once I click on it it will uh, create a code space for me so first of all it will assign it a name uh, any random general name so for example I have did, did uh, okay it's a difficult, bit difficult to read but this is the name that was given to my um, code space uh, I, we can have more than one code space is running at a time 
now how do i find out you know how many code spaces are running uh, for that i can go to github slash code spaces and uh, i see that this is the one that we just created so only one is running for me owned by me um, here it gives me options to uh, delete a code space stop a code space if i have stopped it i can rerun it again so this is where i would come back later um, if i want to either resume my work or if i'm done with my work, uh, work I, i'll make sure that i have deleted the code space for me because again we get a limited number of hours um, and even if we are um, uh, even if the billing is enabled for us then we will be billed for for the usage so here we can make sure that um, um, the code space is is either paused, stopped, I mean, or or either removed. So I will go ahead here um, a, a new code space which which just launched. Let me maximize it. So what I can see here is uh, that it has uh, opened this uh, repo. The code is open in a, in a VS Code environment, and this is all running on the browser. This is not uh, some some software that I'm running on my MacBook. So here, um, I also see a terminal, which is the most important part of a code space. We'll come to it a bit later. But first, um, as you might al already have experience working, I can, I can just go and uh, look at the files here. For example, Bamni Light. This is my Docker Compose YAML, right? I can choose to make changes or not. Uh, that depends on what I'm trying to do. But for now, let's just try to bring up Bamni. So um, I am right now in um, in Bamni Docker, the root of the repo. Uh, to run Bamni, I, I, let's let's run Bamni Lite for example. So I have to go to Bamni Lite, and all of these uh, instructions are given in README, by the way. So what I'll do is I will just go to Bamni Lite. Now I, this terminal allows me to run commands. Again, this is all running on cloud. Uh, whatever commands I run, uh, this is an Ubuntu based machine that we have access to uh, Linux. So yeah, I can come here and to run Bamni, I expect Docker, right? I need Docker. So since this is a dev box, um, the best thing is that most of the tools that we need to either run our software or, or to build or to um, develop software here. Are, uh, we can expect that those most of those tools are already present in the dev box. So for example, Docker, I can just do Docker version or Docker help. It tells me that there's Docker 24.0.7-1, which I believe would be the latest version right now. So Docker is already there present. I don't have to worry about installing Docker, setting it up. So I can directly come here and do Docker compose up in a detached mode. And once I run it, it will start pulling in the images that are needed. Now again, you can see the network performance is also very good because this is running on cloud. So it will start pulling the images and then it will run it. Um, while this is happening, let's also explore a little bit more. Go to Bamni organization again. And we saw that um, how we actually created a code space and uh, what happened uh, after afterwards. So as you know, Bamni is uh, made up of many different components, right? Many different modules and and th those modules are then packaged mostly um, I either as OMODs or or as Docker containers. And uh, then we those are pulled when we need them pulled from Docker Hub and then they start running. But uh, almost all of these containers that are currently being pulled uh, their code exists in in these repositories. So, for example, um, I can I can look at something like this. So, OpenMF module appointments. This is one of the modules of Bamni, and uh, this is the backend code of appointments. We have another uh, repo which is uh, having a similar name to this, which which is a fr has the front end code of it. But if you look at this one, for example, let's say we wanted to make some changes here, do some development work here. Um, just by looking at it, uh, we can say that it is a Java based application and uh, you would need a certain version of Java, Java to run it, to build it. And then uh, you would also need Maven, as we can see, 
<coughs> and uh, uh, which which exact version of Java do we need? Uh, that's not given in the readme, but if we quickly have a look at the workflow, we see that, okay, I need Java 8 to build this code, for example. So I can do that in the code space again. And we'll see how we how, how we'll do that. And before, before we start doing that, let me quickly come back to, yeah, it has finished pulling in all the containers and we see that the containers have been created, volumes have been created, network has been created. And now how do I access so? Uh, if I do docker ps, I see that <coughs> Bamni is actually running on docker. But how do I access it? Usually if, if it was on my local, what I would do because everything is running on my local, I'll go to my localhost, open, open my browser, type in localhost and port 80 or localhost port 443 and that would load up the Bamni homepage or the UI for me. How do I do that here? Because this is all running uh, on cloud, right? And how do I know about the ports? Because because the Docker compose file, so we know the proxy image exposes Bamni and we see the port 80 and 443 has been exposed. So, um, so first of all, when we do this, um, when we, um, the terminal or the code space automatically senses that a certain port has been exposed. So, so you might have uh, seen a pop-up coming in here which I ignored. So that basically tells us that, okay, uh, 443 port has been exposed. Do you want to access it or, or not? So so I, I'll come here to this option here. This is forwarded ports. And you can see that automatically it, it knows that 443 and 80 are exposed and it gave, created a forwarded address for these ports. I'll explain expand it a bit. So the naming of that address looks like it is a name of the code space that we are running then some random string. And then port number is also mentioned in the forwarded address, uh, which helps us if there are multiple ports and we want to access them. So um, then we can easily uh, understand which uh, port we are accessing using the forwarded address. So if I try to access this URL, for example, it opens it up in the new tab and it tells me that it's being connected to forward port and so we see Bamni running on, on the code space using that forwarded address, right? And we don't have to worry about the SSL certificates as well because that is also managed by GitHub. So we see that we, we were able to run Bamni on Docker, not only run it, but actually access it. And uh, coming back here, one more thing uh, is that uh, if, we, if we look at the default visibility of these ports and addresses, it's set to private, so only I can access it. But if we want to, let's say, send it to one of our friends to have them um, look at it, I can right click on it, change the port visibility to public. Um, and then uh, anybody can access it, not just me. So if you want to hand it over to someone to have a look. And I can, I'll see a warning, I can say continue, and then I can access it without even logging, right? So that is how it works. Uh, I can click on cl clinical services, um, go around, but I, I'm not sure if the OpenMRS is ready yet. Let me quickly have a look. Seems like OpenMRS is up, so I can, I can go to clinical services. Superman, admin one, two, three. <clears throat> we see that we can yeah we can use Bamni on it without a problem so that was about running Bamni now coming back to the development work we were talking about the this module which was a Java based um, application and we, we were saying that we would need a certain uh, we would need Java uh, 8 to build this project and then Maven so what I can do is I can again come here go to code spaces create a new code space uh, for this but what that will do is it will create a separate a new uh, code space for it so I'll have two code spaces running at a time I can do that um, uh, and then I can build this project it will give me an O mod I can then download an O mod upload it here so so one good thing about uh, the code spaces is that let's say there are files here I can right click on the file and just download it I can also right click and upload a file to a code space that's also allowed 
but for now what i'm trying to do is instead of creating two different <coughs> code spaces to to do this i'll just use single code space and uh, do everything there so what i'll do is uh, i'll just copy the uh, github url for for appointments come here open my terminal which i closed accidentally uh, so here you see that uh, currently i am inside workspaces slash bamni docker i'll go back to workspaces and just clone it here um, when i paste it it is asking me if i want to paste or not allow i'll allow the copy paste and this will clone the new repository here now we can clone the repo anywhere inside the code spaces that is not important why i did it here because uh, uh, so by default whenever we create a code space there's a um, directory called workspaces in the root of um, the dev box and uh, github puts the um, repository inside it so just to make everything keep everything clean i put my appointments here as well so i'll go to appointments and uh, if i do uh, code dot it will open a new tab for me now this is the same code space even though it looks like it it created a new code space but it, it's the same code space it just uh, opened that repo in a in vs code for us so that we can access the files and change the code if we want uh, but the terminal uh, or the dev, dev box is the same so i can see that appointments module i can easily go around look at the files um, make changes if i if i want to do anything right if i want to change anything uh, then i i then i can after i'm done with my uh, work i can just build it so to build it we already saw that we need java 8 now uh, what version of java would my code space dev box have pre-installed so if i do java version i see that uh, by default there is 21.0 lts i don't want this one because because i know that appointments needs java 8 so um, how do i switch between versions uh, there is this tool which comes pre-installed sdk man i can just do sdk list java <clears throat> and there are different vendors i'll stick with amazon coreto and uh, i'll just choose this copy and i can do sdk install um, java 8 it will quickly set it up for me So Java 8 is set as default now. We can confirm it again. I see Java 8. <coughs> now next, I, uh, what I need is Maven. Maven is also installed by default. Sorry, I was about to check version. So I see Apache Maven 3.9.6, which I believe would be the latest one, but. Uh, I don't want this one. I can I can use it. I believe, but I will stick to the Maven wrapper, which which we are bundling with the repo. So what I'll do is dot slash mvnw. Uh, I can have a look at my readme. So mvnw clean package is how we build this. Uh, I'll hit enter. So it will start. Yeah, it starts it building and pulling in all the dependencies. So it will take some minutes, and uh, once this is done, what we can uh, we can go to this path, and that's where we would find the uh, OMOD. So let us do something similar. Um, we know that uh, devs dev. What I'm trying to show is you know uh, what kind of tools are already present in the dev box and how easy it is for us to configure and start development. So I will go go to Bamni again and choose some front end repo. Um, something that comes to my mind is the Bamni apps right now which is the Bamni web module so I'll do the same thing I will just 
copy it here in code spaces clone it sorry instant bami apps again do the same thing so that it opens a uh, it up in a vs code for us so this is still building it will take some time and in the meanwhile so we have checked out the open mrs module bami apps repo if we look at the readme it will tell us what are the dependencies so is one time installation it says that it needs node or npm version 10.11.0 now it does my code space come with um, node js pre installed or the node installed i'll check that node version uh, version 20 is the default one here i again need to switch it down to um, 10.11 so for that there is this uh, tool called NVM, which is also pre-installed. So I'll do NVM uh, list node. So it tells me different versions that I can switch. I think I have to do NVM um, install 11, 10.11. What is it? 10.11.0. 10.11. If I say, let's see what it does. Yeah, it has started setting it up quickly okay now using node 10.11 again confirm node version yeah 10.11 um then there is yarn install yarn i believe yarn will be pre already installed here we don't have to install it yeah it's already there so what i'll do is i'll skip the rest of the things because i believe those are already there i'll just go to build commands so i have to go to ui folder inside ui i have to run yarn install first so that it downloads all the dependencies yeah, it is fetching packages in the meanwhile we'll have a look at our maven yeah okay this is also happening <coughs> this is also happening bum is also running so yarn install has finished i'll do yarn build running eslint uh, about it due to some commands failed it is saying that uh, there are some warnings we can force it for now because they're not we're just trying it out so i'll use force i don't want to fix the warnings right now is done but with warnings which is fine for us and uh, now um, the way Bamni web module works is that once we build the project uh, we have to then <coughs> package it and as a do docker image and then publish it to um, docker hub which happens through github actions but we can we can uh, package it with docker um, right now inside the code space to do that I had to first look at the docker file which I which would be in package docker so I am inside UI um, I'll go back to root of the repo sorry and here I can do docker build x build um, minus I tag it as pamni web um, code spaces and do the path to the docker file which is inside package docker docker file and this would be the context so if I hit enter it will start pulling in the base image HTTP alpine and then building the image so my docker build is done 
I can see that this image Docker images will be present um, inside the code space now yes uh, there are other images which which it pulled in at the time of docker compose up but um, so we have our own custom um, built bamni web in here and because it's the same code space i can also find it here right so if i want to and not use the default one but instead switch uh, switch the bamni web image to the one that we just built i'll go to docker compose file i'll look for bamni web service yeah here it is change the image to the one that we built so we have bamni web code spaces and then i'll go back to bamni docker bamni light where my docker compose file is and then i'll do docker compose up sorry docker compose up detached mode what this will do is it will sense that the bamni web image has changed so that so it will recreate this container use the new image instead of the old uh, bamni slash bamni web so if i run enter here you can see that it recreated this bamni web docker ps will confirm that for us and we can see that bamni web code spaces is the image that is now running and it is up 4 seconds ago so if we go to again bamni home um yeah this is the one that that we just built so it's not the old image that came um pre installed this is still happening usually it takes around 5 minutes so we will not disturb it let it happen and in the meanwhile um we saw that how we how we built this front end project and then um packaged it as docker image and within the same um code space we were able to uh change the bamni web image and then to run it right so while this is uh, this is happening i'll just go and uh, we'll, we'll have a look at quick look at the some of the settings some of the configurations that we can do to code spaces so if we go to our uh, settings of our account that we are using we have an option of code spaces here uh, so we can see that um, uh, the important settings for example would be code space secrets So let's say I I am working uh, and uh, on something uh, and there is some sensitive information information in the sense like let's say I want to uh, the do, the image that I'm uh, packaging for Docker I want to publish it to Docker Hub for that I would need to authenticate to Docker Hub using my my Docker Hub credentials right now how do I store those credentials I can create it as a secret here store the uh, store my Docker token or whatever it is or the password. Uh, or for example i i want to connect my code spaces to say aws so i need to configure and manage that uh, aws token aws secret so i can store those here in the form of secrets then uh, select some of the repositories which i want to give access to those secrets and then um, once i am i'm working on those those repositories inside a code space i can access the secrets safely in a secure way so that is something that we can configure here there are other settings also for example um, if i if i come down here um, something important like say i can i can uh, select a region so right now it is set to automatic so it will understand where i am located right now it will choose the region which is closest to me if i want to set a manual region uh, no matter where i am i want to just keep using some other you know some some of the region here i can select that and it will understand that um another Im uh, important thing is uh, the idle timeout which you might um uh, so what what an idle timeout is for example right now it is set to 30 minutes so if i am not doing anything inside the code space for 30 minutes automatically github understands that the code space is not being used so it stops it uh, why it does that because um, we don't want to waste resource uh, resources right we don't want because we 
right now i am being uh, so the the number of minutes or the number of hours i u- i use the code space for you know that gets uh, that is always calculated and and github ke- keeps a track of that so we don't want to waste time uh, for that there is an automatic timeout set we want the timeout to be there um, in case we forget you know let's say i close a tab closing a tab won't close a code space for me so again if i go to github slash code spaces i see that this is running for me and if it keeps on running uh, i will exhaust all my free tier usage right so i can uh, i should always uh, make a habit of coming here making sure that i am stopping or or deleting a code space where i'm um, when i'm done using it so for that um, this is the default timeout and uh, what happens for example if uh, many times you might be working and then you are just exploring something on the on the ui on the of the application and uh, you suddenly everything stops so that is happening because of this idle timeout github automatically closes it if you are not using it um, like this so if that happens you have to just come here and restart it from here or it will it will just start from where you left all the files will be there all the image that you built will be there unless you st- delete the code space so coming back to my appointments i see that tests are running so it will soon finish so build is successful and we expect the omod to be present inside target here and we see the omod is there i can download it use it locally if i want or since it's the same code space and i want to let's say i want to replace this omod Uh, which is currently running in bamni or uh, to see if my changes are reflecting or not for that um usually we first look at um first delete the existing omod inside the open mrs image so if i have open mrs here um i'll go inside open mrs go to open mrs/data/modules um i will have sorry um ls and i see the this is the old omod which comes um, pre packaged with the open mrs so i'll just remove it now i don't have any omod here uh, now what i'll do is i will copy the um, the omod that i just built inside open mrs and for that i need the path so what i'll do is i'll copy the Uh, I'll go to omod target. This is where the omod is, right? So I'll do pwd copy this path. Come back here, docker cp to copy files to and from containers. What is the omod name? Appointment snapshot. then the container id or container name which is this inside which they can find it in open mrs data modules and it has successfully copied the omod i can again confirm exec um cd come on yeah cd Let's grab a point. So this is the new OMOD. I can now restart OpenMRS so that the new OMOD starts. Uh, I can I can see it there. So this is how we can um, set up a GitHub code space quickly. Um, we, we saw that we didn't need to install tools. Everything was pre-configured and easily we could uh, spin up a, ba- a running Bamni instance, and then we can actually work on the code and rebuild some of the modules, repackage them. Uh, and then make sure that they start working here uh, the change start reflecting so that was a quick intro to code spaces and how code spaces help us uh, developing bamni so that that's all for this um, session i hope you liked it i hope you learned from it if there are some things um, that you feel um, you know can, can be achieved through code spaces which would be very helpful for the community uh, feel free to add those things or let us know Thank you.